Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a textured pattern in Illustrator, a pattern that has some texture built into it. Before we begin, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. I also have Illustrator training at udemy.com and you'll find a referral link for each of those courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family, friends and co-workers. Let's swing back to Illustrator and I'm going to create a pattern in Illustrator. So I'm going to make this as a series of circles. They're going to have a black fill but no stroke at all. I'm just going to drag out a few circles. I'm going to make some a little smaller than the others. To make my duplicates, I'm just holding down the Alt or Option key as I drag a duplicate away. Now I'll select everything. I'm going to make the pattern using the Pattern Make tool, which is in Illustrator, all the CC versions as well as CS6. Choose Object, Pattern and then Make. If you see this dialog, click OK. Now the first thing to do is to check and make sure that the width and height of your pattern tile, they don't have to be the same, but they do need to be values that don't have things after the decimal point. So they have to be whole numbers. Right now mine's a square, but it doesn't have to be that. So I'm just going to make it not a square. So I'm making sure that this option here is not selected so I can change each value independently. I'm going to make the width 550 and the height 600. So I'm making it not a square. I'm going to zoom out so I can see things more clearly. And I'll just increase the number of versions of the pattern here so that we can see it. And I'll turn the artboard off as well. Just give us a better look at the pattern. So this is going to be the size of my pattern tile and it's 550 by 600. It can be anything, whole numbers though, please. So once you've made it 550 by 600, you might find that things are overlapping. So you might find that you've sort of forced some circles to be in the wrong place. Well, all you'll do is go and move them into a better place. Once you've got the pattern that you like, and I'm pretty happy with this, you'll just click Done. We don't need our circles any longer and it would be nice to get our artboards back. So I'll click View and then Show Artboards. I'll zoom in by pressing Control or Command Zero. Okay, now we're going to get our texture and I already have a texture that I've downloaded from a site called VectEasy.com. You can get free textures here and I downloaded one of these sort of gritty grunge ones. It came with six textures in the file so what I did was just turn off visibility of five of them and we're going to focus on this one. Before I take it to this document, I'm going to change its dimensions, the dimensions of this texture, to match the dimensions of my pattern swatch, which was 550 pixels wide and 600 tall. So with it selected, I'm going to go up here, make sure that this icon again is unlocked. It's not selected because we want to be able to change the width and height individually. So the width is 550 and the height is 600. We're going to copy this with Edit Copy. We'll go back to this document and we'll paste it with Edit Paste or you can use Control or Command V. Now we're going to move this into the top corner so we know where it is. Out of these nine boxes you'll select the top left one and then set the X and Y values to zero. That just puts the texture in the top corner. We're going to do the same with our pattern. So we're going to drag our pattern out of the pattern swatch. Now it comes with lots of other little bits and pieces. That's because this is the way pattern swatches look. It's this bit in the middle that is our pattern swatch. Let's go to the layers panel and just see what's happening here. So this is the group here that contains our pattern. If we open it up, you'll see that the very end or the very bottom of this is what's called a no fill, no stroke rectangle. It's a rectangle that has no fill and no stroke and it marks out the area that our pattern comprises. Well, what we're going to do is take a duplicate of it. We're just going to drag it onto the new icon here. So we've got two of these and we're going to move one just above absolutely everything. And then we're going to select everything. We're going to select the copy, no fill, no stroke rectangle plus our group. And then we'll right click it and choose Make Clipping Mask. You can also get to that by choosing Object and then Clipping Mask, Make. And what that does is it uses that second No Fill No Stroke rectangle to mark out the area that comprises our seamless repeating pattern. 
and this we're going to place immediately over the top of our texture and we're going to confirm that it's in the right position which it's not at the moment. We've got its top left corner selected, it should be at zero, zero. So now we have our texture in place, at the moment it's underneath our pattern. Well we're going to target the texture here and we're going to cut it from the document with Edit Cut. Then we'll select our pattern and we're going to choose Window and then Transparency because we're going to make what's called a transparency mask which will allow us to knock holes in our pattern. So with our pattern selected we're going to click here on Make Mask. We're going to target this box here and everything's gone white, that's just fine, that's exactly as it should be. With this box targeted we're going to paste our pattern in, so we're going to use Edit Paste in Place. It's critical that you use Edit Paste in Place because that's going to put it back exactly where it came from. Then we'll go and click on Clip to disable that and check and see what we've got. And you should be seeing white marks or white through your pattern piece because that's the texture eating a hole in your pattern. If it doesn't, you can try inverting it. You might need to do that depending on the type of texture you're using. In our case, I'm going to turn Invert Mask off because that's showing me exactly what I want to see. I'll reselect this object and this is where if you're going to make a mistake is where you're going to make it. Have a look here in the layers panel, you'll see that we're working in an opacity mask. The layers panel doesn't look the way it should and that's because we are working with this opacity mask over here. If you want to get back to regular editing of your document you have to click on this option first. Click on this box to target it. See how the layers palette changes? If you can't edit your document properly, the reason is you didn't go back and select the original object in the transparency panel. So you could do that if you need to get back to working in your document. So now we have a pattern swatch. If we have a look in the layers panel, we've got all the objects we need and we've got our no fill, no stroke rectangle at the very bottom of everything. So we're going to drag and drop this into the swatches panel. And what you should see is what we're saying here is this swatch should fill up this little box in here. Since we don't need this any longer, I'm just going to delete it. Now I'll create a rectangle the size of my artboard just to test this out. I'll make sure the fill is targeted, go to the swatches panel and let's fill it with our pattern. And now I'll scale it so we can see it more clearly. Object Transform Scale. I'm going to bring the pattern down to 25% but of course I only want to transform the pattern and not the box that it's in. So I'll click OK. Now you might be seeing some tiny hairlines through this. This is Illustrator, it's not in the pattern so when I zoom in the hairlines are disappearing or they're moving. And if they move or disappear then you're just fine. If they stay in the same place it's because you've got a problem with your pattern. So that's how you can create a textured pattern swatch in Illustrator. The success is going to be measured by how the pattern looks in the first place. It works really well on a pattern like this because all the elements are sort of separate from each other. If you have a pattern that pretty much fills the entire pattern swatch and it's solid and if your texture is not going to tile really nicely then you might have difficulties. This texture is going to tile reasonably well, let me just show you when I place it side by side. You can see that there are not obvious lines in the texture and because it's such a sort of spread out texture it will work as a seamless tile really really well. But other textures may need some work to actually create them as a seamless tile before you can use them in the pattern. But I thought it was an interesting exercise to see how you could texture a pattern swatch. I hope this video has been of help to you. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.